Hi there, Kiwi Kaja here, and welcome to episode 39. Hinga Kaka, the biggest battle in New Zealand ever. Although I have included this in the Musket Wars series, it happened around 1790, before muskets had arrived in New Zealand. It was fought with traditional Maori weapons, but what sets this battle apart is that between 10,000 and 16,000 warriors took part. That is a record, even to this day. The reasons for covering this battle is that it created much take, or reasons for revenge in the future. Again, I'll use Peter Hiranui's book, King Potatel, as my main source. Getting a lot of good use out of this. So what's the background to this battle? Um, on one side we have Pikau Tarangi, a chief from the Maricopa region, which is south of uh, Kafia. He has taken offence at the way a fishing harvest has been distributed. I kid you not. It appears word gets out that he's planning on attacking the Waikato tribes to get satisfaction for this perceived insult. For some reason, attacking Waikato strikes a chord with Marydom south of the Waikato, who see this as a way of stunting the ever-increasing power of the Waikato tribes. Southern and eastern tribes send war parties to join Pikau Tarangi in his campaign, and all these forces eventually meet just north of Otrahonga. There is over 10,000 warriors. Doing a surprise attack in Maridam is a difficult business, so the Waikato tribes know this army is moving towards them. The fighting chief of Waikato is the famous Te Rao Anga Anga. He is the father of Te Whero Whero, the first Maori king. Te Whero Whero is about 13 to 15 at this time and probably doesn't take part. Waikato supporters from as far north as the Kaipara send warriors to join the Waikato forces. And at the time of the battle, it's estimated Waikato has between three and 5,000 warriors. Now, being the defender gives you the opportunity to choose the battlefield. Te Rao Anga Anga chooses the area between two lakes at Te Mangaeo. So let's look at this on Google Earth and get an idea of the terrain chosen. Okay, so here we have the North Island and um, Around here is Maricopa area, which is where Pikau Tarangi came from. All his supporters came from this area here, over here, down the bottom there. And they met at Otrahonga. Now, Hingakaka is about uh, two kilometers north of modern day Te Aumutu. So let's zoom on in. Okay, so here we are. That road running along here is Naroto Road, and we're just going to zoom out a bit. Uh, here is Tiaumutu, up here is Lake uh, Naroto, and right here is the Hingakaka battle site. Now, we'll look at this in a bit detail, but you might be able to detect that there's sort of a depression area here, and over in this area here, another depression area. The actual road, Naroto Road, which is here, is along the spine of a ridge. And in this area over here, probably stretching all the way back to Lake Naroto, would have been a lake of water, which has now been drained and that area has been turned into farmland. Similarly, over here, we have another depression and this would have been full of water and another lake. So the battle is going to commence along this spine or this ridge here. Now what I did, I of course visited the area as I do, and uh, there's a park, car park just here, and I flew the drone up the road a bit and then sent it straight up in the air. And then I took a uh, 180 degree photo, uh, pan over view uh, around there and what we're going to do is we're going to use that in order to discuss what happened during the battle. So let's do that. 
So here we are up in the drone looking to the north and in the distance we can see uh, Lake Naroto and you can see all that flat lying land there that sort of leads all the way down to the lake and over there would have been uh, a large body of water. Then we come around to the Naroto Road and on the other side we have another depression um, that you can see there and in the distance we have Taumutu. So that's the scene. Uh, we'll come back to the middle here. Now uh, what we're going to try and do is we're just going to put in the lakes here. So um, we're organized to put the lake in on the south side and the lake in on the um, north side. So that's my impression of what, what may have happened here. Now Te Ranga, uh, te, um, te Reo Anga Anga's uh, forces are set up here in three main bodies. That body there is uh, the body whose chief is uh, Hua Hua and then Te Reo Anga Anga is looking after the middle section and Te Riwa is the middle. And then we also have a group at the back as reserves. Pao Tarangi's in orange here and his forces are matched here. After the usual palaver that goes with uh, the beginning of engagement, um, the various hakas are run. Then uh, Te Reo Anga Anga initialises battle and sends his right flank down into Pikau Tarangi's left flank and battle commences there. Te Reo Anga Anga comes up in support and as the fighting continues, uh, Hua Hua starts having the advantage and starts pushing uh, Pikau Taranga's left into the centre. Then Te Reo Anga Anga comes down and the forces under Te Rewai also come down in support. The middle section now engages with the main body. Once that uh, Tirawai sees Tirawa sees that the battle is going their way, he organises to extend his forces up the ridge there. Meanwhile, Pikau Tarangi brings in his main force. There's just too many people, too many people there in the melee, and uh, the Waikato forces start gaining the advantage, and they organise to push the uh, Pikau Tarangi's forces uh, up into the lake area there and uh, this continues as the forces push forward push forward and the whole goal is to drive them over to the side of the lake where they have the height advantage plus they have the lake in their background there and eventually the trap is set and then the battle is virtually over at this stage and uh, Te Rao Anga Anga and uh, the Waikato start to make a meal of uh, the opposing forces. The opposing forces are decimated. Many go into the water, try swimming across the lake. There is general panic. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much the way the battle ends with mass killing along that edge there. Those that um, make it into the water... They're either killed in the water or there are scouts around the outside of the water that wait for them to get there then kill them. Probably quite a few of them actually uh, escaped around the area at the bottom of this lake and headed back. But there was significant slaughter in this battle and um, a huge and incredible victory for uh, Waikato. Um, so in conclusion... It appears that thousands were killed in this battle. When you consider that the population of New Zealand at the time was somewhere between 100, 150,000, then this was a huge event. Pikau Tarangi, having to organise and direct 10,000 warriors from different iwi, would have been an almost impossible task. It had never been done before, and to pull it off would have required weeks of practice. You can see things turning to custard very fast. Te Reo Anga Anga had a far easier task and could plan his strategy for the landscape he had chosen. Pei says that during the battle, Waikato could identify the accents and dialects of those fighting against them, and thus know, and thus know which iwi would use some utu 
for the sheer audacity of invading the Waikato. During the musket wars, scores would be settled. Because of the number of chiefs that lay dead on the battlefield and the feathers worn by them, this battle became known as Hingakaka, the fall of the bright plumaged parrots. Okay, folks, that's where we're going to leave it for the time being. Uh, I haven't gone into a great deal of detail because not a great deal of detail is known about this battle. So until the next episode, take it easy and uh, stay safe out there. Till next time.